I just I think this year the way this team is built is really designed to if they built it around Josh Allen very well, and I think he's going to do a lot better because of that. You know, I think you know he's been a fifty six to fifty eight percent completion percentage guy throughout his career. He's not the most accurate. We all know that. I think this year he's going to be able to to hit his guys in space though. I think he's going to take a step up in my opinion. Reason being, well, one of the reasons being is the run game, man. I mean, Devin Singletary just learned under Frank Gore for a whole year, and he did pretty good when he was in the games too last year. Like he, he He's literally learned, learned from the Yoda of running backs. <laughs> yeah, and then Zach Moss, the guy they drafted, there's been a lot of hype around him lately, and he was, he was a beast in college too. So he can kind of spell snaps for Singletary, keep Singletary fresh. I mean, that's a great duo. And then – Worst comes – I mean, you have T.J. Yeldon who can take a few snaps in the shotgun. That's not bad at all for your third string. I think that run game is really going to benefit Allen. I think they're going to run a lot of play action off it, go under center a good amount. Especially if their offensive line is, like, it's kind of on the fence of, like, I don't know, I would say it's a little below average, but they have some good players there. And they like to go extra protection sometimes, kind of like the Vikings go two tight end sets, pound the ball up the middle and all that stuff. Um the wide receiving court, the addition of Stefan Diggs isn't big for me because of what he brings to the table. It's big because now you have three guys who are really, really promising, I think. Because last year they kind of had one spot where it was like there wasn't really like a, a guy you could kind of count on to be that that number two. You know, obviously Diggs, I'm, I'm not I'm not as high on Diggs as everyone else is. I think he drops the ball a decent amount. Um, I think he's I think he's a great receiver. I don't know if he's an elite receiver in my opinion. That's up for debate, I think. But he's the number one they need. And, you know, John Brown was the number one last year. They do put up 1,000 yards. So him being the number two is a big upgrade now at number two. And then Cole Beasley, I mean, the dude's literally open every time out of the slot. I hated playing against him when the Eagles played against Dallas. I mean, oh, that dude just gave me nightmares when, when we would play him. There was, he definitely had some catches that kept some big drives going and, and allowed the Cowboys to win some big games versus us great slot receiver no matter what you say you know the, the stats don't really show his value in my opinion I think he just gets open so often and it's Gabriel Davis guy um, who's going to be probably the fourth receiver who they drafted he's just a playmaker watch out for him this year from UCF Dawson Knox really like him at tight end I'm excited for him offensive line again I think is on the fence but I think they can get the job done as for the defense the man, defense Defense is crazy, bro. I mean, Sean McDermott was a defensive coordinator with the Eagles. I think he was the coordinator. He definitely had – he had a lot of defensive jobs with the Eagles back when he was with us. And he's done a great job with that defense there. He's, he's kind of focused more on the defensive side of the ball. You look at the, the front seven, I mean, you've got um, Jerry Hughes, who's not bad. Um, Vernon Butler is pretty good. Ed Oliver was a nice rookie last year. Trent Murphy is pretty solid. Um, you know, you've got uh, – who's the other guy? Mario Addison's pretty good, too. And then you draft A.J. Epinesa, who's supposed to be pretty good, too. We'll see whether whether he pans out or not. But that's the line. And then you've got – the linebacking core is pretty awesome. I mean, Tremaine Edwin, Edmund is a stud in the middle. He's just an athlete. I mean, he – you look at the numbers he put up. Go look at his PFF grade. I mean, the dude is – he holds down the middle. He's a, he's a true middle linebacker. And then A.J. Klein and Matt Milano are really good on the outside linebacker spots. And then, man, this secondary is just so far above average. I mean, you've got Tredavious White, who's like your bona fide number one corner. Levi Wallace, who's a very nice number two. Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer at your, as your safety duo. I mean, they've been great with the Bills. And then, I mean, Josh Norman, I, I have my worries about him. I don't think he has it anymore. But, I mean, to have him mentoring those guys is huge. You know, I really like this roster. I think McDermott's a great coach. I like the coaching staff there. I think, like I said, I just think they're really – they built around Josh Allen on the offensive side of the ball, which I really like. They built to his strengths, too. And the defense is just the monster that it is. They're going to be able to win a lot of games with this team. Yeah, I mean, you touched on a lot of it, man, like, this is a very complete roster. On offense, McDermott really can't scheme his playmakers open, man. And the issue with Diggs, like you, I'm not sure if it's fair to consider Diggs an elite receiver, but like you said, it can't be argued that he is a legitimate number one receiver. Like, he gets open like that, he catches like that, like he is the legitimate number one. 
And then, like you said, that frees up guys like John Brown and Cole Beasley, who was always free somehow anyway, <laughs> even more. So, like, that just opens up the offense more. And then Devin Singletary, bro, look for Singletary to have a year, man. Look for him to have a year, I'm telling you. He, I think, McDermott is going to pound the ball with him, just use that time of possession. Yeah. I really think Singletary is going to have a tough year. Then you go to the defense, and it's I, – I think it's fair to give Bills – I don't think I'm reaching if I say third best defense in the league. Definitely, I would say they're top five. I mean, I haven't ranked my defenses personally, but. Like, I think you could put the Niners and Baltimore above them, but can you give me anyone else you'd really take defensively over? Dude, come on. What do you mean? The Bengals added so many players. No, I was playing. Sorry, Nate. Love you, bro. <laughs> we love you, Nate. But legit, I think the Bills could possibly be a top three defense. Like, you mentioned it, on the line, they got mm. boys out there. They got players. They got studs. The, um, and then, I was just going to say, the Patriots, just by, by scheme, are a top, a top defense. <laughs> oh, my goodness. With the boys from Dunkin' Donuts. But, legit. Then you got the linebackers, solid athletes, like you mentioned, who hold down the middle. And their secondary, bro. You don't want it with their secondary. You don't want it. Any one of those guys can hand you the business, pick the ball, stab it out. Like, those are some dogs on the secondary end. And especially in a passing league now, that's so important to have on your defense. And like you said, Josh Norman being a mentor is just huge for them too. But, yeah, let's hop into the schedule, man. All right, man. Well, the first two games we can kind of just gloss over. Uh, I mean, we have the – Yeah, we already talked about it. They're getting the win in both of those. Yeah, so we both have wins for that. So, why don't you start us off with LA in week three then? All right, man. So, that's not the Chargers. That is the Rams, despite their logo looking super <laughs> weird. But versus Los Angeles at home versus the Rams at home, honestly, I feel pretty comfortable in giving the Bills the win. Aside from their roster being a bit more complete, I don't really think that this early in the year, the Rams will be prepped for the defensive beating that they're going to catch from Buffalo. And I think Buffalo will, their offense will be more prepared for the Rams defense, which like you mentioned, has taken quite a few hits over the last few years, whether it was bad contracts, trades or whatever. Like I just, maybe if this game was later, I'd feel more conflicted about it, but this early in the year, I feel pretty comfortable giving it to the Bills. Yeah, to your point about time of possession earlier, I mean, with that run game that the, the Bills are going to have this year, they're going to give their defense a lot of rest too. So in games like this where if they can – well, especially like I mentioned, the Rams front seven, I'm not sold on at all. I need to see them prove it. If they, go, if they go out there and play how I expect them to play and the Bills just control the clock, that defense is going to be so well rested and just it's going to be beating, like you said. So I just think the Bills are a way more complete team. That's a dub for me for the Bills. Week four at Las Vegas, I don't care about the travel in this game or being away. I just think the Bills are a much more complete team. I don't think the Raiders are ready to compete with a team like this, especially in week four with all the new faces they have on that team. Um, you know, the, Bill, the the Raiders have some nice receivers, but again, that plays right into the Bills' strength with their secondary. So I, I just think, you know, overall, top to bottom, the Bills are way better. I got you. And, I mean, like you said, for the Raiders, even though it's home field for the Raiders, I do still give the Bills the win. Again, this is one of those games I don't think the Raiders are ready for yet. They're not ready for the defense. They're not ready for the offense. This is just a mismatch on both sides of the ball. Even coaching-wise, again, just really not sold on Gruden, and I really am sold on McDermott. Giving it to the Bills, get them their fourth win, undefeated so far. Yeah. And then they go to Tennessee. I was struggling with this pick. I'm going to be honest, just because while I know Derrick Henry can break you, we've acknowledged it multiple times on this podcast. He is a towards the end of the year back. He takes some time for him to really get his feet under him, really get rolling, really start hitting the holes, just to really start doing King Henry type things. And I personally am of the mindset that Ryan Tannehill is going to take a step back this year. I love Mike Rabel as a coach. I think he really made a mistake committing to Tannehill. 
I think that was a huge mistake for the Titans organization. And honestly, I think Tannehill is the X factor in this game. So with me not believing in him, I'm inclined to give the Bills the win here, keeping them undefeated. So in my opinion, I have I have the, the Bills losing this game just because they're going 4-0 in their first four. I think they're going to come in a little cocky and kind of get handed, kind of get it handed to them by Tennessee. I'm not completely sold on Tannehill either, but I think even though the Bills defense really impresses me, I think Henry's that guy even early in the year. I think this will, you know, he has a few good games early in the year even. I think there's this is going to be a game where he just kind of wears them down because he's just so tough to tackle and he's just great once he gets any sliver of space, just putting guys to the ground with that stiff arm, anything. Um, and I think, I think, in my opinion, I think A.J. Brown could be a generational talent at wide receiver. You know, it's early, very early, but I think he has the skill to be. I think he might have a, a bit of a step back this year, but I think, I think he, he can handle anyone in that Bills secondary as good at it, as it is. I don't think A.J. Brown gets taken away in this game. I think he's going to play well. Um, you know, Tredavious White is very experienced, but I, I really think, to me, A.J. Brown is the X factor, and I think that's going to make Tannehill a lot more comfortable. Going on a short week to, to Kansas City, I mean, even at home, I mean, I'm sorry. I think I think the the Bills are really good this year, and I really like them. I just think being a short week and having to play a team like Kansas City is really tough. Andy Reid. I mean, Sean McDermott's one of his former assistants. I don't think Andy Reid's going to lose to one of his former assistants this early in the season, though. I think the Chiefs are really going to just get the ball rolling. I think the Bills could make it close, but I I think you know the Bills are. I think the Bills are a team that's more fit for a short week rather than. A Bills team that does have, or I think I meant to say the Chiefs, I think are more fit for a short week rather than the Bills team that has some some younger guys still. Um, I think I think the Clyde Edwards Hilaire edition, which I've talked about a lot, uh, I talked about that in AFC West pod. I mean, Andy Reid with running backs is already scary, and adding a guy like that to that offense that's already so dominant. I think there's so many moving pieces in that offense; it's so hard to contain. While I think the Bills defense could step up to the task, I'm going to take the Chiefs in this one. Yeah, like you said, this is – in the NBA, they have these things called scheduled losses, basically. They're not official or anything, but it's a term basically where you go back-to-back -back games and you're just expected to lose one of them eventually just off pure fatigue. And to me, this game on a short week against the Chiefs, despite home field advantage, is one of those scheduled losses. I just think the Bills – this is one of those few offenses that can outgun the Bills defense. And I'm not sure if the Bills offense can make up enough on the Kansas City defense. So, again, this is just a bit of a mismatch. Not a huge one, but I give the win to Kansas City. Bills take their first L. And then next, they're going to beat the Jets. Sorry, Jets. They're going to beat the Jets. This is just a better roster, top to bottom. I don't care about home field advantage. They're going to beat the Jets. Yeah, I've been beating the Jets as well. I'm not going to say anything on it. Going on to week eight versus New England, this is a big game because this is really where we might see the separation of one team towards the division title. I'm going to take the Bills in this one early. I just think, I think it's in Buffalo. Bill's Mafia is going to show up somehow, some way. <laughs> I mean, you've seen the Phillies pandemic crew outside of Citizens Bank Park. The Bill's Mafia is going to be something like that. Um, but I just think – I think – I don't want to spoil the next, the second game for the Patriots. But anyway, I'll talk about the, the Week 16 game later. But I, I like the Bills in this one. I think the Patriots will have a little slip up early in the year and not quite be ready for this just because – even in, in week eight, there's still going to be some things, some little things that are still some of the guys on the Patriots offense will be getting used to. I don't think their team is the defensive monster that, that shut down the Bills last year. So I think they lose the first game to the Bills. So I have the Bills running this one. Like you, I think this really could be a passing of the torch type game for the division, seeing who really separates himself as the leader and who is going to be, have to fight for that wild card. And I'm going to be honest, everything in me is screaming for me to pick Belichick and the Patriots just off pure instinct. I'm going to take the logic call here and go with the Bills. I just think roster-wise, they outmatch New England in terms of talent. 
I still think Belichick obviously holds a coaching advantage over McDermott. But I don't think that advantage is severe. Like, I think they both do similar things. They both try to take away what their opponent's offense does best. They both try to really pound the ball and have their quarterback play a kind of secondary role. Like, honestly, I'm taking the Bills. It sounds so weird to say that, like saying that I'm going to take the Bills over the Patriots. <laughs> but I'm going to say it. Bills get their seventh win. And then next, unfortunately, if it's cool with you, I'm just going to do both of these next two games, like, in one set. Versus Seattle and at Arizona, I just have them taking two L's in a row. I think after the win with New England, I think that'll be one of those wins that gets them kind of high. And versus Seattle, I think you can really get caught slipping with that kind of mentality. I think Russell Wilson is one of those people, one of those mobile QBs. That's a big thing to me. No matter how good of a defense you are, a mobile QB is a defense's worst nightmare. And Wilson and Murray, I think, are just going to torch the defense. I think it'll be unfortunate. I think the defense will put up a fight. And I think the Bills' offense will attempt to carry the load here. But I just think Murray and Wilson are going to run over the Bills' defense. And, yeah, that's it. I'm giving the Bills two straight losses there. I actually have the same thing. I have two straight losses as well. I think, like you said, the highs and lows are really important in a season. And coming off that New England win is just going to be really hype. And I, I think some of the guys might get caught up in that. Seattle and Arizona are two of the offenses, kind of not like the Chiefs, but they're, they're, they're some of those offenses that can hang with the defense like the Bills and put up points. And with a team like the Bills that I think is built to play from ahead, I think the Arizona and Seattle can strike quickly and, and strike first too. And I think that might be a big X factor in this game in that both of them are going to take, like you said, the mobile QBs, Tremaine Edmonds can be a QB spy, but at some point you can bend, but you're going to, you're going to break against those types of offenses. in my opinion. So going into the bye week, week 11, then they come out, play Los Angeles in week 12, um, the Chargers this time. I have them beating – Chargers I think Herbert will be starting I think he'll probably start to hit his stride maybe I don't know it depends on when he when he plays his first game but a more complete team with the Bills Chargers lost the key defensive player in Derwin James not the x factor on that well I shouldn't say that but like there's other good defensive players on the defense but still that's a big loss and I think the Chargers aren't built to play with a team like the Bills like you said I have them beating the Chargers I just think coaching-wise, McDermott's got the win. Roster-wise, the Bills have the win. And then they got home field advantage. Like, it's all stacked against the Chargers. No offense to them. I think Herbert, like you said, will still be getting his feet under him. And, I mean, I can't imagine any better way to get your feet under than you than playing the Bills' defense. What a way, huh? Like, that's going to be a rude awakening for him. But I have the Bills taking the dub there. And then they go to San Francisco. And I really wanted to take the Bills in this one, man. I wanted to take the Bills in this one. And if it was home field for the Bills, I think I would give it to them. But at San Francisco, having to make that trip across the coast, having to deal with a defense, I don't think Josh Allen is ready for a defense like Frisco, man. I just don't think he's ready for that. Maybe he'll respond under that pressure, but I don't think this is the year he grows into that. And – you want to talk about collapsing the pocket, playing the run, shutting down your pass game. The Frisco defense does it all. And then Shanahan's offensive scheme with Jimmy G, who can make the reads and make most of the throws. I'm giving it to the 49ers. Yeah, I have the 49ers winning this one for pretty much all the same reasons. I think Allen will develop under pressure, but I don't think this is going to be the game where he succeeds under pressure. I think He's going to be on the run a lot, and I, I don't think he's going to be on the run where, where he can, you know, move towards the boundary and run and, and make a throw. I think it's going to be a lot of running backwards just because of how athletic that 49ers secondary is. They can contain the outside and prevent Josh from, from getting any running lanes. And, again, like the, the 49ers run scheme, man, no matter how good of a run defense you have, is just so hard to, to stop. They still have Mostert. You know, I don't care which linebacker you have out there. Maybe a couple linebackers in the league that could run to the boundary with him, but he's just – he's so quick. I think he's going to be able to get, get to the outside and make some plays. And, I, you know, Debo Samuel will be back by this point. 
and they run so many gadget plays with them, it's ridiculous. So I have I have the, the 49ers winning. And then going to Pittsburgh for um, a Sunday night football game, that's going to be a fun one to watch. Very good defenses. I have the Bills winning this one, though. I just think the Pittsburgh's a little bit younger. I think, I you know, Big Ben's a bit of a question mark because, it, it, you know, it's not just an injury. He had el- I'm pretty sure he had elbow surgery, which isn't exactly the ideal thing to, to come back from at his age, too. But anyway, I think their their secondary, the, the Steelers, that is, is solid with Fitzpatrick. I think outside of him, there's a few question marks there, though. That I think that Bills can as- attack a couple guys, especially with the addition of Diggs. And I, I just have – I don't know. I just – I don't have a huge reason for this one. You could sway me on this one, but I have the Bills winning this one. Like you said, these are a pretty close matchup. It is home field for the Bills. But they're two young teams with stellar defenses and acceptable offenses, which are mostly schemed by their coaches. So while, like you said, you could definitely sway me on this one. But I think just because, like you said, Big Ben is a bit of a question mark. I am going to go with the Bills and home field just tack on to that as well. I'm going to take the Bills in this game. I'm going to be honest. I hadn't really made up my mind on this game beforehand. I want to see what you'd say when you went on it and then see how I would feel afterward. But to be honest, I just don't see enough things going the Steelers' way. I see this going for the Bills. Then next at Denver. <sighs> I believe in Denver, man. But I don't know. I think, like you mentioned earlier, I think Buffalo could be fighting for playoff seeding at this point. But then you're at mile high this late in the year, that weather. I'm going to say that the Denver offense shows out, overwhelms the Buffalo defense. And I don't think at mile high under the weather conditions that the Buffalo offense responds enough against the Denver defense. I'm giving the win to Denver. For me, I'm going to go with the Bills. I know it's really tough to go into mile high in that, you know, this is probably a bit of an upset, especially with Denver hitting their stride at this point in the season. But Devin Singletary is one of those guys who, even with Zach Moss getting some carries, I really think he could be one of the next big things at running back. Even with the, the Broncos front seven, I think they're more built for pass rushing. The run, I'm not saying the run defense isn't good, but I think De- Devin Singletary, if they, they go two tight ends most of the game and, and pound it with, that extra protection, I think the Bills really succeed with that. And I think they might just go in and control the clock in this game and wear down that defense as much as they can, even if they're not getting points. I think they're going to try to keep the Denver defense on the field a lot and just keep that keep that time of possession in their control. So that's why I have the Bills winning, just because I think that at this point in the season, the Bills are going to be really start to hit their stride in that time of possession area. I think that's a big thing for them. And then going to New England, so I had – I had the um, the Patriots winning the first game, um, or no, sorry, I had the Bills winning the first game against the Patriots, but I'm going to take the Bills or the, the Patriots in the second one. I just think the Pats will want revenge after the Week Eight game. I, I we'll get to this in a minute, but I think <laughs> I think 2020 is going to be the Bill Belichick revenge tour, man. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of teams on that schedule that that upset him pretty bad in recent years that I think he's going to want to get some revenge at. But um, I think just being able to play a team twice, Bill excels at making adjustments, especially at halftime. I think that's going to be a big impact on this game. Because I think the Bills might come out strong and play well, but especially being in December, maybe there will be some fans there in Foxborough. Going into Foxborough in December, regardless, is tough in that. I know the Bills play in cold weather too, so I'm not saying that, but like, Foxborough man just has a different feel to it. I don't know why. So I, I think at this point the Pats are going to make a week 16 statement and come out and win this game. Like you said, in the previous game, I went against my gut and I called the Bills. I can't go against my gut here. Late in the season at Foxborough, Belichick has already played you once, looking for revenge, possibly a playoff spot. I think Cam is settled in, in the offense. The guys know what their roles are. Defense is established. I'm giving New England the win here. I just see too many things going their way. And my gut always screams for me to take New England in New England. And then lastly, they finish out with Miami. 
and I have them taking the win because I think this could be a decider as to whether they win the division. So I'm having Buffalo go hard. They take the win. Finish for me at 10 and 6. Yeah, I have them winning against Miami as well, finishing at 10 and 6 too. <laughs> So, exact same record. We had a few different games, but, I mean, that was pretty similar overall. But, yeah, that's that's our Bills preview. 